Sometimes a child will attempt a word several times either by trying different words or sounding it out. It is important to record all of the student's behavior as they are a window into seeing how the child is processing at points of difficulty. If the child lands on a word that is a substitution, it is considered an error. If the child eventually says the correct word, a tick mark is recorded and it is not count counted as an error. If the child mispronounces a word due to articulation problems or dialect, record the mispronunciation and mark it as a mispronunciation, but it is not counted as an error. On the screen, you'll see both typed examples and written examples. In the first example, the child says, here, huh, huh, home, and then goes on. In that case, it's counted as one error. In the second example, the child is sounding the word out. Huh, huh, ho, home, and gets it and moves on. In that case, it's not an error, but it's important for you to record the sounding out because it helps us understand how the child is processing and um, attempting words. Sometimes these multiple attempts bring the child into a state of confusion and it is necessary to provide some assistance. At this point, say, try that again and mark the entire confused part in brackets and TTA for try that again. It is important not to do any teaching during this time, but you may indicate to the child where they should begin again. When the child rereads and tries that part again, record the fresh start below. The entire bracketed muddled part is only counted as one error. I think of this prompt as a mulligan you're giving them a second chance after they've been kind of muddled up. Any other errors made during the Ray Read are counted as well. You can see the typed version and I wrote it out to show what it looks like when you're taking a running record. The muddled up part sounds like this. Susan look said the headmaster Timothy as you're hearing a child read this, you can tell that complete meaning has broken down and what they're reading doesn't make sense at all. That's an indicator to me that they're muddled and you can give them a try that again. So the teacher says, try that again, can point back to the word Susan and let them have another go at it. That entire section that is bracketed is only one error. The part below it is what the child says on the second time through. Susan said, went with the headmaster to. Notice she self-corrected the word went. And therefore, in the second time through, there are no errors. It's just one self-correction. Try then again doesn't need to be, is not used that often but when you have a student who's completely muddled, sometimes they just need that extra chance. Let's give it a try on section five. Remember when the child gets muddled, it's likely you will be too. So don't panic, just record the best that you can and say try that again. And don't worry about how accurate your recording was. Ready? Here we go. I will have to be both the child and the student, so you'll hear me tell myself to try that again. She asked the pig, will ya, ya, yo, huh, huh, my, try that again. Will you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, grunted the pig. I've 
got better things to do. If you need to pause before looking at what that running record looks like, please do so. Here's what the try that again, the muddled bracket would look like. I was sounding out the word you, sounding out the word help, said my, omitted the word plant, and at that point it wasn't making sense, so the teacher says try that again. The second time through, the child read everything accurately. This is only one error, because remember it's like a mulligan. Sometimes a child will say a word and then stop as if indicating that he knows he made an error but doesn't know how to fix it. If this happens, you record the substitution and then you can tell the correct word to the child and record a capital T below the line to indicate that the teacher told the word to the child. Other times a child will pause at a word appearing like they might be processing or might be stuck. It is important to give some wait time to see if the child will process the word on his or her own. When this happens, a good indicator that you've given enough wait time is to draw the lines, write the word, and make a pound sign, and if the student hasn't responded by the time you complete that, then it is okay to tell them the word. Let's practice recording a told on section 6. Remember, as the reader is pausing, draw the lines and pound sign give you a good ga giving, it gives you a good gauge as to how long to wait before telling the child the word. Again, I will have to be the teacher and the child, so I'm going to have a long pause when you hear the word being told, that's the teacher telling the word. Ready? Here we go. Then I'll plant it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. That particular told would look like this, and you'll notice I had enough time, the teacher had enough time to draw the lines, write the word myself, draw a pound sign, and then give a told. <laughs>